Let's have a look at some examples where we work with the hyperbolic function. I'd like for you to please pause the video here and to try these questions on your own. Number one, on separate axes, sketch the following graphs. Show clearly the coordinates of any intercepts with the axes and the position of the asymptotes. So if we look at number A, we can see that this graph has been moved three units up. So our vertical asymptote will still be the y-axis, or the line x equals to zero, but the horizontal asymptote will be the line y equals to three, because we've moved the graph three units up. If we look at this part of the equation, that tells us that in relation to our asymptotes, the graph will lie there and over there. So we can now go ahead and calculate our x-intercept for the graph by making the y-value equal to zero. If we minus 3 from both sides and multiply both sides by x, and then we can divide both sides by negative 3, and we get negative 2 thirds. So we now know that the point negative 2 thirds, which is over there, lies on the x-axis. That is not enough information to sketch the graph, so unfortunately we need to calculate the coordinates of some points. So we need at least two points on each side of the hyperbola in order to be able to get the shape of the graph. So if we go with the left-hand side, if x is negative 1, the y value will be 2 divided by negative 1, which is negative 2, add 3 is positive 1. So we know that we'll have a point at negative 1 and 1. So we can fill in that the left half of our graph will look like that. And now we need some points on the other side. So if x is positive 1 and positive 2, if x is positive 1, y will equal 5. If x is positive 2, y will equal to 4. So we can plot those values and join them up to create our graph and then just give the graph a label to finish off. Number B, the position of the asymptotes will be at x equals to 0. This graph has shifted 2 units down, so the horizontal asymptote will be at y equals negative 2. This is negative, so that means that the graph will lie there and there <coughs> in relation to the asymptotes. Now if we calculate our x-intercept, we make y equal to 0. Add 2 to both sides, multiply both sides by x, and then divide both sides by 2. Negative 3 over 2 is negative 1 and a half. Again, we need some extra coordinates on both sides in order to be able to sketch the graph. So we're going to plot a point at negative 1. Negative 3 divided by negative 1 is positive 3. Positive 3 subtract 2 is positive 1. So we have a point at negative 1 and 1. And if we join them up to form our hyperbola, it looks like that. If we now plot a point at 1, and I'm going to plot a point at 3 so that I don't land up with fractions when I divide. Negative 3 divided by 1 is negative 3. Subtract 2 is negative 5. Negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 subtract 2 is negative 3. So we have a point at 1 and negative 5 and a point at 3 and negative 3. If we now join up those two points to form a curve, the other half of the hyperbola looks like that, and we just need to provide a label. Question 2. Find the equation of f if f of x is equal to a over x plus q. If you have a look at the given information, you can see that they have given you the horizontal asymptote at y equals 1, which means that we've shifted this graph one unit up, and we've been given the value of the x-intercept, so we can infer that the coordinates of that point are negative 2 and 0. So f of x is equal to a over x. We can already say that the q-value is positive 1 because we've moved the graph 1 unit up. If we now substitute the point that we were given in place of x and f of x, we will have 0 is equal to a over negative 2 plus 1. Subtract 1 from both sides and we get the value of a to be positive 2. So therefore f of x is equal to 2 over x plus 1.